this is a little recap of my 2023 outdoor glam camping season. I am in southern Spain and my orchids and I are heading into winter. Even though orchids have their growth season not dependent on the four seasons of the year here, but still, seeing as the phase of the orchids being outside for the most part is now almost over, it's a good time as any to close the chapter of spring summer 2023. I have not documented everything that happened as it happened this year, so what comes next is all from memory and if I missed anything that you remember, fill in the blanks in the comments because I am certain that I will forget something and just watch. It will be something really relevant. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Stand out this season was humidity. My goodness, I absolutely love the consistent high humidity from June through to mid-September. Sure, I had a few days during which it was the norm of 30%, but only a few days. It was wonderful for me, for many orchids as well, and for many orchids it caused their demise. Seeing as my standard average humidity levels are around 30% in the years that I've been working with this collection, my setup is geared towards a very dry climate and my water retentive media balances the low humidity out. Well, when the humidity is consistently above 75% as it should be for optimal orchid growing, water retentive media sucks the humidity in from the air and no matter how much airflow there is, the airflow is also loaded with humidity, meaning nothing dries out. I am not complaining at all. Sure, it's upsetting to lose orchids, but it proved a point when I speak about how LECA and other water retentive media has to be dialed in so as not to lose orchids and semi-hydroponics in a climate with high humidity. Anyway, I thoroughly loved it, despite losing orchids. Meanwhile, my rescue missions are still underway. The fowls that I have switched to semi-hydro are doing really well. I will do a separate video on those, but in some cases I have had emotional times to say the least. Before I briefly touch on the orchids that I lost and why, I want to thank you for being here, for clicking on the video, for taking time out of your day to support this channel. If you have not subscribed, it would be awesome to have you on board. So please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like if that is not asking too much. Thank you! Okay, so high humidity, the standout of the 2023 season, resulted in loss of orchids, especially the mini orangus, which included Mr. Sidii and Pastuosa. I'm also losing some neos because of their setup and the humid conditions combo, possibly Shutano and Gorgio Fukurin. My set Suzanne was gone before the season really got going, so that does not fall into the category of high humidity. I got the culture wrong, and after years of holding on, the orchid just said, Lady, you suck. I I'm out of here. <laughs> Oops. I guess I didn't get the hint with the other two. Another mini angrecoid that I lost was Rangeris masticola. With the exception of the set Suzanne already, you know, sayonara before the season began, the setup for the rest was also water retentive and they all had another thing in common. They are miniature orchids. So yeah, it was a bit of a cluster. <clears throat> Anyway, moving on to other losses not humidity related, I lost a battle against scale with many of my tolumnias. The hardest loss this year was Phalaenopsis giraffe, which hit me extremely hard. That wasn't scale, that was stem rot. Tetratonia dark prints also didn't make it because of scale, and then I had several dendrobiums that bit the dust because of thrips and spider mites, as well as my conditions that are not ideal for them, so they went on their way. I have to say that my dendrobiums gave me the biggest headache with pests and a fungi I cannot seem to shift, as well as different kind of scale raised its head early on in the season and it has affected all of my purpuratas and some cattleyas, leaving white spots behind. I now have orchids variety Dalmatian. <laughs> And that new kind of fungus that I just mentioned, it started making its rounds early in the season as well, which settled on Patricia van Puyenbroek first and moved to Hibiki. And the only thing that has worked so far is just the removal of the leaves. Thrips and spider mites made their rounds on my dendrobiums. I tried to stay on top of the Nafritz Alex Poli and the Bensonier. 
Unfortunately, Nafitz is not deciduous, so I'm still working on getting that orchid to finally grow clean growth to keep them clean as well. Over an extended period of time, that would be nice. I would pat myself on the back if that were to ever happen. And Sonia is deciduous, so I'm not bothered by the leaves looking nasty now. They're gonna go anyway. But I take all this as a warning and as a challenge for 2024. Orchids that started to recover this year are Aurantiflameum, which I have been a helicopter mom over to avoid any spider mites because my Bensonia was affected by them and they live pretty close together. No matter how hard I try to keep them as far away from each other as possible, they both need quite similar conditions during the summer. So yeah, they're, they're not direct neighbors, but a little too close for my comfort. But Aurantiflameum is branching out with new branch to new growths and I'm hoping it'll be okay in the long term. My OG Kautskiana has finally gotten a root system that will ensure its battle for survival and my little Rupestris is also showing signs of roots that it has not had since I received it four years ago. My pride and joy recovery is my Epidendrum Stamfordianum, which I have featured a lot in recent videos just because wow! <laughs> so happy to see this orchid recover the way it has. I may allow it to bloom in 2024 if it wants to, but it will depend entirely on how it gets through the winter. I'm also so happy that my Rinko Stylus Gigantea and Banda Cerulea has made a comeback after years of trying to figure out how to grow this orchid and have it keep its roots, again dry conditions for the past four years, and this orchid is not happy in those conditions. It has been in semi-hydro for two years, that is how long it took to see something happening as far as growth, and this year it got a snazzy white semi-hydro pot because the signs that this orchid is now growing so much better are evident. First time bloomers were White Bridal, the Kautskiana that I got from Anonymous, Fornery, my Atro Walker, one branch of my Chao Praia is now blooming with two beautiful spikes, my Monificum and probably other orchids that have slipped my mind. Again, if you know more at this point, remind me in the comments. While on the subject of first time, I have several orchids that started new growth during a time of year when they normally do not. Astraea not only came out of the gates with four new growths, but is now maturing an additional three all within a 12 month period. We still have no blooms from this one, but wow, the root system is gaga, so now I'm hopeful for 2024. My Digmiana, Tenebrosa variety Aurea, and the Perforatus are growing new growths when normally they start them during late fall, and then I have to be all panicky about them with the low light levels throughout the winter. But nope, we are already well on our way and I could fertilize at leisure. My Gold Coast grew two new growths after being attacked by Ciliano, and while one of them at the moment is blooming, <laughs> the other growth, the sheath, has cracked open. So that would be two growths blooming from the Gold Coast for the first time. Both my Catacetinae are already growing spikes. In my opinion, that is a little bit prematurely. We had a treat from Jack of Diamonds this year with female blooms, and now the blooms have faded. We are already getting a new spike growing. This one should be the male blooms. The same with my Aft Dark Black Pearl. The spike started growing very early in the fall. Whether I will let this orchid bloom out remains to be seen. I'm not happy with how the back bulbs didn't plump up this season, so it may be a good thing to not let this one bloom out. But we are in for a treat as well with my two large and grey coids, as long as I don't mess things up. Both of them are working on double spikes. That would be the first time in two years that we may have double spikes in bloom, and it would be such a wonderful show if I can get them to bloom out for us. Stay tuned for what happens in the coming months. Cousin It became a daddy, and baby It's are scattered around Europe. He sends his regards and hopes that his offspring will make their new parents happy. And Big Daddy has shown two blooms already, even though there are no signs of actual spikes. But last year, he started blooming in November, and I thought, that was early. Now, at the time of filming, this is October, and I had two blooms. Totally crazy. <laughs> mounts. It was a big year for mounts. 
I have mounted a lot of orchids to cork mounts after my inorganic mounts had reached their capacity for the orchid's future progress. I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed seeing those orchid roots reach the mounts when they weren't stubbornly growing aerial. As the majority of my orchids are in a setup where I cannot geek out over roots, this is a treat for me. The cork bark, however, has attracted a new kind of visitor, which is a little alarming. I had a carpenter bee way too invested in my cork mounts drilling holes to lay her egg in one of them. This is something I'm going to have to be careful of in 2024. I don't want my mounts to be ready rendered useless prematurely by a bee drilling holes into them making them look like Swiss cheese, which would speed up the degrading process. Yes, the orchid roots would find the holes, but the point of this exercise is to not have to remount for many, many years. We have touched down was a reoccurring thought in my mind when I saw the roots reach each of the mounts in question. It was so much fun. And let me show you the recovery of my Dendrobium soraula. I have new roots growing at the base. This is huge for this orchid because she struggled more than I thought she would after she got sawn off the Aphila mount. Yes, at the beginning of the season, I took a saw to a mount and carved two orchids out of the mount because after five years, well, the Aphilum is a bit of a beast. So <laughs> it was the first time I ever used the saw to get orchids off a mount. But hey, there's always a first for everything. And who knows, maybe in future I will be needing to do this again. I am just happy that Seraula is now growing roots at the base and she is recovering from that shock. My standout orchids for 2023. Well, Stan the Man has given me the most joy because I managed to get him to grow 25 new growths this year and no locust has taken out the leaves. The challenge for the winter now is to protect his new foliage from cold damage, but his towel will be handy and hopefully effective. And another standout orchid is Kimmy, <laughs> even though she has never bloomed for us. She is an amazing specimen by now and can just grow like a weed, blooms or not. I just love this orchid regardless. Standout growth this year has been the root growth of many of my orchids. I thank the high humidity and maybe even a touch of Bactophil for that. It's just been wonderful to watch the explosion on my totem pole and of course Kimmy. The Angracums, well, there has been branching on my bossery, which is not something that happens in my dry climate. But this year the steel roots branched in places, giving me more root tips to enjoy. Stay tuned for that video because that is standard on my channel when I pull them out of the hedge and we can see how the new roots of 2023 perform. Spoiler alert, something has been chomping on the root tips. There may be losses and there may be branching that I have not seen because these orchids were not moved since they were placed into their deep south position back at the end of April. And I'm going to mention my Munificum one more time because the 48 hours that I had to to witness the beautiful blooms for the first time was a huge blessing. Unfortunately, <laughs> some creature also enjoyed the blooms so much it had to digest them and I only had a fraction of time to enjoy them. I hope that that creature had a major stomach ache afterwards because oh, it was so sad to see them gone, like razor gone. Still, this orchid has blown expectations out of the water as well. From seedling to blooming size is always such a huge milestone for any orchid grower. Off the top of my head, this is my recap, the ones that come to mind sporadically. If there was anything that stood out to you this year, not mentioned in this video, again, type away and let me know what stood out that I have not included. I so appreciate you watching this video to the end. It gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day, but with a condition that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.